Okay, it's time, time, time. How's it going over there, all my friends? <coughs> um, now, if I go to my main map, which is my outside map, um, we've got some of the furniture that I've been building, some of the furnishings I've been building are actually placed inside it. So they're starting to come together. Um, it'll take a moment or two to load, so it's going to be a chance to... Let's go to my... Broadcast managing software on the other screen. I don't broadcast both screens because you'd need a very wide monitor for that. And I don't think most of the streaming software can manage it. So I'm trying to stream in 4K, you need like some sort of ridiculous end bandwidth. But I do want to keep the chat system so that I can see it. So, just in case anyone pops in, you see. There we go. I just want to split that off. Don't worry if you can't see what I'm doing. You can't, because I'm on a different screen to you anyway. I just want to make sure that I can see where the chat system is, just so that if people want to talk, they can talk. Okay, that's done. Now, if anyone drops in and says hello, whilst I'm doing this, I can see them. Okay, so you can see where I've been up to. I've got um, a conference table now in place. Um, and I've got that there, which isn't really doing much. Um, now, I'm going to get rid of this for the time being. Okay, I might put something over here soon, but I haven't decided what. I've got a very basic, simple light up, up, up there, but that's about it. I'm going to get rid of this for the moment. I don't think it's really what I need. And instead, I'm going to treat this a bit like, you know, an office. So, if we consider this being the backdrop, just here. Now, I'm only furnishing this so that during the introduction, and you know the kind of splash for when we're coming up to start to use clinic for a new user um they have kind of a point of focus the whole idea is that this is going to tie everything together so if you're just wondering why i'm doing this i mean this isn't part of the program as such this isn't a place that people can explore it's very much something that kind of can be seen from the outside and that's about it uh, okay, so I'm going to get my clinic assets meshes and I'm going to pull the modern table center and modern table support that I built and just put them round about there, I think. Okay, that way we've got that. And no, I don't want to make two copies of it, that'd be a bit much. I'm going to just move that across to there and then move that across to there. Okay, that way we get slightly more support on it. Now, you may remember I purchased the library pack and I've had no regrets since. I'll just quick check and make sure these are lined up the way that I want them. They are, so that's cool. Okay, so I'm going to use um, some of the bits from the library pack for this. Uh, so if I go into there and then there, and there's some chairs in here. I mean, there's not a great deal of stuff that I want to use, but there is enough stuff to make it useful. And you'll notice that I've got these two carpets, one and two, which I like both of. Um, I think, actually, I'm going to use this carpet here. And the good thing about this is I can grab one and just drag it across. And then I can take the other one by duplicating it. And rather than worrying about having them look identical, I can just sweep it round 180 degrees. And we get that kind of shape, you see. Which is nice. Although that gap down the middle, oh, that's setting off some OCD, something chronic there, actually. Let's do it 90 degrees. There we go. Okay, because I want a modern-ish looking office. But I like the idea that we've got this kind of slightly worn carpet in here like that just kind of looking at that I like to look at things and think to myself well is that working, is that not working I'll decide in a few moments it's not working right, let's get a chair instead the library gave us some lovely chairs you see, so we've got these which are kind of, kind of are guest chairs for people just kind of coming in. Okay, 
can imagine that clack clack walking on these hardwood floors, can't you? There's one. And I'm just gonna pull this second one. And just re-angle it a bit. Actually, I'm just gonna pull a fresh chair in and just change the angle completely. It's to 90 degrees. And that way we have a spare chair. The idea being that most of the time people are going to come in here and they'll be kind of doing the things on a one to one basis. Let's move the spare chair over there. And then I would like maybe a nice higher detail chair to come in here. Now you can see by the way we've got too much shininess going on on these chairs recently, which is making the leather look a bit weird. That's why it's kind of doing that over glossy thing. So I might change that soon. I shall see. But, like I say, they're supposed to be seen from a distance. Um, okay, so meshes. And... I'm just going to pull my high detail modern chair over. So, and like I say, the main point of this is so that in the splash we have basically something for people to look at, you know? Okay, let's bring that back. Acids, and I'm going to go back into here. I've got lots of stuff that I can use at the minute as resources. Um, I th I'm not shy of using resources that seem to be working for other people anyway, so. I'm just going to. Really just mess around with some of these. See if I can find something that's kind of working nicely for me. And we'll turn off my snap to. There we go. Pop up. Not there. Got a floating book. I do want a book maybe down there. Okay. That works for me. I mean, at the minute, this is just kind of mere doodling. I was trying to get things to kind of come together. Just checking, right. And like I say, we should never have anyone kind of come in here. Okay, now at the back here, where we have the space. I'm just going to use my snap twos again. I do come in useful for this. Because this way, if I want to have bookshelves and a library at the back, I'll be able to build them using the actual library assets. Just going to stick a point light in the so I can see where everything is on this. As you can see, it goes up quite high at the top. I don't really want that one. I mean, that's uh, 370 high, that's 477 high. Do a quick replace. Have we crashed? We have crashed. Give it a moment. Sometimes you get gold, sometimes you don't, dude. That's the way it goes. There we go. So, got that, and then we need some ends which are the same height, which is what, 400 and. Blah, 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 blah. 477. So, maybe that pillar there. Quite like the idea that these pillars have been bought in, and, you know, they're being. Used in this modern office in this way. There we go. Just go into the control select there, bring them across. Not right the way to the wall, but up to about there. And now I'll just start. Duplicate them across like that. Just trying to avoid too much of a 
break in the middle. And then we'll get these colossal kind of bookshelves. And then a smaller one perhaps in the middle. things I got when I purchased the library pack is so incredibly useful. It's uh, basically a book generating kind of, um, what do you call it, blueprint. Um, I've created similar things before for creating paths and bridges and it's not too hard to create to be fair. I might make one myself for some other stuff I need later on. But it uh, really is invaluable for things like this. Now, I don't need to worry about the top because we're not going to see it, so I'm not overly concerned about that. Um, I don't like this little overlap here. I don't know if that's going to cause me a problem because I can see some said fighting, that's what it's called. So I might chop that down to one. Put that with it. Yeah, the Z fight now I think is going to happen no matter what. Uh, I may be able to hide that with the books. If not, I'll put a middle bit in. I think I'll put the middle part in it anyway then. It's a shame. I mean, there are ways to get around this kind of flickering, which means changing kind of your depth. Um, it's like a bounding setting. I'll find it in a bit. It means having to remember stuff, and remembering stuff's never good. Hey, Darren, well done, mate, you made it. So, at the minute, I'm just... Basically, uh, let me have a look. I'm just going to find this link. Using the power of Google. So, what we're looking for is Libra Gum Road Unreal Engine. Okay, now, <clears throat> here's a nice little asset. Okay, so from one dollar you can have this, okay? This is the library asset and I'm using this quite a bit for some of the parts in the project because it's really, really useful as filler. Okay, one dollar, you know? Or more, that's just, you know, the minimum donation. Or seventy-five dollars if you want to use it as commercial. Um, it's a lovely, lovely piece of work. I don't know if Ico... is it Ico has done any other stuff? but. Uh, Damn me, this library is nice. No, it looks like just the library. Anyway, um, if you do that search on Google, it's very, very worth looking at. Right, no, where was I? Anyway, so I put the library shelves in, and what I want to do now is go down to my blueprints, and you'll see I've got blueprint book layouts one and two. Now, this can make the scene a little heavy if you're not careful, but it's all instanced, so. I take my BP book layout, and the first thing I'm going to do is just rotate it and bring it into place. There we go, like that. Now you'll notice it says end point, which is always good. Let's get the thing that says end point, and then if I bring it in, that's it. Okay, so it'll create as many books as I want. Now I can have the books all running behind here, but if I have the books running behind this um, point of the bookshelf, then we're going to get quite an unprofessional look so if I do this you'll see they're kind of merging in I mean I can do it no one's really going to notice but I'm going to notice and it's going to piddle me off something chronic so I'm not going to do that now these books here you've noticed we've got book height scales and we've got steps and things as well so we can increase the number of steps so we can have spaces between the books or whatever you like pretty cool I'm just going to change my steps to I don't know, whatever it was. I'll just use Control Z until I can remember. 0.3, there we go, it was 0.3. Yeah. Knew it all along. Okay, now if I copy this, I'm just going to do an Alt and Drag. You'll notice my books are now different, which is cool. Um, they're not really as tall, but I can change my height scale. Give myself some nice big old books mm -hmm. like that. Now I'll change them again. Okay, so this has given us like some serious business looking books. I can change the covers perhaps on these to, I don't know, something a bit more blue 
I don't know, we're not very good with colours, you know. There, look, they've got some nice blue looking books. Yeah. And now I'm going to take these ones and. It's all about the decorating of your sets, you know. You've got to really give it some thought. Try and find a way of making things look different. Okay, and now these ones, these are going to be much shorter books on the top. And so I'm going to change the scale on these. See, so they're little fat books. Nice. And then up here, same again. Okay, so that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six layers of book. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our books here and hold Alt and just slide them along. Now you may notice the end point on this one slightly different, so we'll fix that in a sec because I want to continue duplicating, so Alt and drag. Because sometimes they'll be thinner and sometimes they won't be. See? Be more space on that one. And I know you may be looking at the project and think to yourself, oh, this looks like Archviz. Everything has to kind of come together in a certain way on this project. I'm very pernickety anyway when it comes to the way levels are laid out, the way things work. I remember when I was doing a horror game, which was only, what, two years ago. And I got it all the way at release, you know, funny enough. But um, I like the way the blue book's in the middle. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I got it all the way so it was like basically ready for releasing. But I don't know. I was genuinely unhappy with the way that um, some of the levels were together. And I don't know. It drives me mad. I like, you know, when you uh, pick at things, when you're worrying a sore tooth or whatever, that's kind of what I get like. Can't be a problem, obviously. And one of the problems you're going to find when you're developing for yourself as well is that because there's no one there really to tell you, oh, you're doing a good job, or oh, you're doing a terrible job, or just you know, stop. Um, if you don't moderate yourself, no one else is going to, and you can find yourself going on for ages and ages and ages without meaning to. Incidentally, I could. Um, just have a look at this. I could use the second book blueprint, but I might do it in just one place. Maybe a cupboard or something. I've got to be very careful because, in my view, it's important that the layout for this is kind of just right. I don't want this um, to lose its visual cohesion. Okay, so. Even though this is like in some place in, I think it's supposed to be Switzerland, although it never actually states explicitly where it is. We are technically in Switzerland. Um, this kind of mixture of the modern and the old, I don't want it broken up just for whimsy, if you know what I mean. Right, anyway, let's have a look down here and see what we've got. Load, load, load. So I've got some lamps, but this lamp's no good to me. If I was to put it on this table, like so, as you can see, it's quite an old fashioned lamp. And I'm going for a more modern kind of library look, so I don't really want that. Um, now, the falling over books I was mentioning <laughs> there's a hat and a hat stand. I think the hat stand I'm going to keep because I like it, it's kitsch, it's kind of what I want, so. There we go, we'll put the hats down there, and then that means I can take this hat. And just clap it around a little bit. It's even got a material on it. World grid material, oh, for heaven's sakes. I have to make a material for you, Hat. I'm going to be very sad. Okay, and let's get it more or less the right place. By the way, if you know anything about bowler hats, in reality, you would not hang one on a hat stand. But, let's see. 
Okay then, matches, I don't want matches or a pipe. Or a rope for that matter actually. You see we could have big ornate ceiling sconces coming down, and hanging stuff on them, but it's a little bit much. It's like this. There we go. Does that work here? I don't think so. There's certain things that we just can't use. Uh, bookshelf. But we can use bookshelves, and they do block off this area nicely. So, good thing about these is, you see, because I'm not actually using any form of separators between the uh, two areas. You see where the boardroom is and then down to the staircase and because I'm not using any form of separator it means that using something like this will work quite well. Now something to be aware of here, I'm going to move that chair I think. It's just going to crowd it too much anyway. There we go. I don't want to have it overlapping at the back, and I haven't, so that's cool. Okay, put that in there. Now, I don't have any form of a plant stand, which is a damn shame, because I would have liked one. And, I mean, these are a fair distance from here, so I can't see them too well, but I do know that the wood's not matching up, and that's kind of annoying. Um, no, Darren, um, sorry, I just saw your message. No, this project's actually part of Clinic. It's not a game, it's um, a clinical simulation that I've designed to assist people with, <laughs> funnily enough, um, obs almost com obsessive compulsive disorders. Let's like make it as easy as possible to describe. Um, now, the thing is that I'm going for trying to get um, some additional money for funding for the project, okay, so that while I'm showing it, I can also have some additional money to obviously spend on additional artists and additional resources. It's already at um, it's already at prototype build and it's been tested. Um, the problem I've got is that the oculus dK2 that I had which I was using to test it, is no longer actually supported by um, Oculus. It's basically the kind of, the way that Apple deals with things, isn't it? It's like, you know, sorry dudes, we're not going to support your product anymore, it's just a brick. So I need to test it now on the CB1, which is the uh, commercial version. And the problem with that is that um, the CB1 is money I don't have. I can't, I don't even have £10 spare. I know it's shocking and sad, but I really don't. Um, so, the chance of me being able to actually afford, you know, an Oculus without any form of grant or without any form of investment is just not happening. Right, so you see this is the second blueprint I was talking about here, yeah? Now, I'm just going to do a quick uh, play in from here. Incidentally, the um, focal shift is built into it. Yeah, these are okay. I'm not getting any problem with those. I am getting problems when I come over here, which makes me think these meshes are messy. So I'm going to delete those. I don't need it. There's no point in using it. Yeah, it's much smoother scroll now. So they were the problem. Funnily enough you will find with some assets that they have issues and you can not put your finger on them. But uh, yeah that's better. I've got a much smoother kind of scroll going on here. Still a little bit raggy over here but I think I know what that is. But it could be this modern staircase which doesn't really fit in with the theme anyway, so I'm going to delete it for the time being. Yeah, that was it. It was that mesh. I'm 
sure of it. Actually, it could just be because it's unbuilt. I'll put them back for the minute. There we go. I keep forgetting I'm not building with. Uh, there we go. It's a bit smoother. Right. Let's see. So I need to put some books inside here. Again, the whole idea is that you know when we swing by this, it's supposed to look like a professional kind of place. So. BP book layout, in you get. And let's just increase the book height. And take the end point back in. I was going to be making some assets today, but I want to get this part kind of dressed as much as I can get away with before I do. messages because today is election day over here in the United Kingdom and I'm expecting I think my daughter's coming over because uh, she cunningly hasn't changed her address and so she has to vote here. And my son will be voting. I've already been down to my election polling booth in the rain, I'll have you know. My middle son's too young to vote, so he's gone off to the download festival to sit in a field and be wet. Hopefully he's enjoying himself. We haven't heard from him since yesterday, so I'll assume he's really enjoying himself. It's quite funny, everyone down at download festival, they've got these bomb dogs and they've got these uh, armed police, you know, everywhere because of the increased uh, recent terrorism activity. And uh, they all think it's great. We've been hanging out with the bomb dogs and getting photographs with the armed police. Which, in my opinion, is exactly the right kind of attitude to have. There we go. So, four people here on the chat system thingy, or could be chatting, but you're probably at work just watching some other dude doing stuff. Which is cool. We're not going to judge you for it. What I'm doing is just furnishing up this area. Like I say, the blueprint itself is not particularly difficult to use. It's just, uh, I mean, make. I'll show you how to make one probably in the next couple of lessons. So be careful I don't get too many ripped through. There we go. As you can see, I've got the light here. Yeah, I don't need it now. And there should be another one somewhere near the ceiling unless I've moved it. There it is. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some light fittings inside this. There we go, moving the lights and certainly sped up the thing a bit. The thing is those lights happen to calculate everything dynamically and we've got all these books now, which is obviously going to cause a little bit of a issue. As you can see at the minute it's quite dark. Okay, that's not bad. Although the reflectivity on those chairs is causing no little issue in my humblest of opinions. They look like they're made out of cheap vinyl. So I'm going to go to my chair material. Which is shiny as. i just remove that node completely. Oh, and generate, and I'm doing a lot. I also know that this Oculus thing keeps loading even though my Oculus isn't working. So you can bug it off. There, that's better. That's much less shiny. So, if, yeah, I think if I was sitting on something that shiny, I'd be sliding off and hitting the floor in a rather unpleasant manner. I don't know who else is watching, actually, Darren. Um, a lot of the time, people kind of put these streams on in the background and just get on with what they're doing. I mean, I do the same sort of thing. I've actually got um, AGDQ running. There you go, much less shiny. I've got AGDQ running in the other window. And uh, yeah, it's kind of working out quite nicely. OK, now, I was just talking about lighting and the importance thereof. Um, I need 
kind of a modern lamp. So I'm going to go over to 3ds Max. And again, if you don't have 3ds Max, then just tell Autodesk you're a student and register and get it anyway. Now, uh, I want a modern lamp. This lamp. See, these are all horrible. So, every single man jack of them. But they're kind of what we want. Actually, I quite like this modern office table lamp. You see, and not too difficult really to make. So, not too difficult. Ridiculously easy. To make. I suppose if you've not used, you know, uh, 3ds Max before, it could be difficult, or any form of 3D modeling program. But uh, anyway, what I did was look up a modern office table. Um, IKEA is a good idea as well. Yeah, I sometimes have the IKEA catalog around just in case. Okay, now remember when it comes down to it. Okay, we're building things that have to work. So I am going to. Uh, scale wise, so I'm going to merge my old table that I just built into my scene. And the only reason I'm doing that is because then I'll get a good idea of scale for a lamp. Because if it's too big, obviously it's going to dominate the table, which is kind of no use to anybody. Okay, so let's say. A lamp should be no bigger than. Hang on, I've not got auto grid on. So about that big, I think will do. And a floor one can be obviously as big as I need. Uh, so I'm going to start here, like that, and I'll give it a radius of 22, 16 sides, one height segment and a height of two centimeters, because units are centimeters in this. Okay, now I'm going to get rid of that, and that. I think the problem that overwhelms a lot of game developers as well, Darren, is that um, when you're trying to make your first game and you've got Unreal Engine, you know, you'll go and put your level together, but most of the time you're having to use a lot of other people's assets especially if you're just a one-man crew. And if you want to make things for yourself, it can seem very overwhelming. And, you know, it's not easy if you've never done 3D before, which is why you get so many of these asset flip games. But I think spending a few months, you know, sometimes it's worth investing that little bit of extra time in yourself. I know everyone wants to be a games bajillionaire straight away, but, you know, firstly, you're not going to be a games bajillionaire the first time out. Sorry, it just doesn't tend to happen that way. First time when you develop and stuff like I did, it's like all just trial and error and finding things out and then realizing you've done it the wrong way and then starting again and being depressed because like only six people have seen your game or whatever. I mean, I released a full horror game with enemies, monsters, sounds, and all sorts. I'll, sh I'll actually load it up in a few and. Uh, give you a quick tour of it because I haven't even gotten it out in ages. I can't remember which version it was for. Now that looks a bit thick. You see that? Too thick. So I'm going to do that again. Remember, if you're modeling by eye, always have Control Z ready. Okay, there we go. That looks better. So we're going to bring that up to about there. Okay, and I'm just using the bevel tool. I like the bevel tool because basically it it's the best of outline, inset, and extrude, all from one click. I mean, I could just use hotkeys, and you know, uh, I'm not going to. Okay, that goes up there, and I'm going to come up here. And I do like the shape, so I'm just going to take that and that and that, and up to there, then straight out and up. Now, actually, I'm going to apply a tiny bevel to that when it comes up, because I'm going to. And then up, then a tiny bevel in. It just makes the unwrapping a little bit easier from just using automatic. 
and then straight up like that. Now I'm going to assume this is where our light bulb will be, which would be kind of in here. Um, I'm just going to obviously put a light source in. So the next thing I need to do is run this straight up to about there, which is going to be the height of our various lamps. And then I'm going to do that that all the way in to about there and then there okay so that gives us the stick which we needed um, so I'm going to quickly want to fix because I didn't really put a bevel on there and you know what not bevel, yeah bevel so I'm just going to bring that up because I can see did I get that right uniformly yeah I did good I always worry in case I've got the bit slightly wrong. Now, the hard bit that we face doing here is this kind of lamp. See that? The curvy lampy bit. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this, and none of them are going to be hard. Um, I think the easiest way, really, to show you how to do this is I'm going to use a sphere like that. And I want a good high. Um, what do you call it? This bit, anyway, you know. Hard. Good high radius. Uh, for segments, 32 is absolutely fine to be honest. Turn my left view port and zoom. And I'm going to make a couple of copies of this. So, two, three. Okay, and that means I can start with this one, which has a much higher radius. I'm going to grab all of them. Now, what I could do is I could. Um, Oh god, what's it called? Use the hemisphere tool. But I'm not going to. What I'm going to do instead is just chop it up. So if I get select by this, do that, delete, and then come over here. What I want to do is grab my polyogon, put it in the middle part, which is about there. Okay, and let's make sure it's as central as I can get. I'm going to have the top view toward. It's best to spend a little bit of time just kind of lining stuff up because you'll notice and then you'll be filled with sadness. There we go. Now I'll just drag that up. I'm just going to intersect this bit, which is eventually going to be metal. Okay, so we can see that's. Uh, Nice, but it's a little bit large, but it's nice. So I'm going to effect pivot only, send it to object, effect pivot only off, and then I'm going to go to my scale tool. I'll just scale it into maybe 75. Okay, so there, that's better. You see, if it's too big on the top, it's just going to look like a silly umbrella. Okay, that works for me. Nice. Okay, now underneath that, I can then have a smaller one. So I'm just going to drag that down like that. And go to my left viewport. I'm just going to loosely drag it over so I can see it. I think I need to bring that in a bit more. Ah, that's better. Okay, and then I'm going to chop it up. So uh, this one comes down a bit further, so maybe there. To about there. And the top people to zoom again. And just line them up yet again. There we are, perspective zoom. And this will just give me a chance to bring this down a little bit like that. Okay, and then there's kind of a last one I can do if I want to. Um, I don't know. I may or may not. I shall see. 
but first what I need to do is basically grab these two which are going to become one mesh and I am going to apply a shell modifier to those it's going to be an inner amount not an outer amount there we go and that way we have these two solid parts just here good thing about only keeping this as two I think is that uh, it's going to work out slightly better I think okay convert to editable polygon and I'm just going to bring this in it's a non-uniform scale so when I'm done I may have to use a non-uniform scale um, oh, what do you call it uh, an no, x-form reset so if I just go over here reset x-form reset selected I click convert to and that will reset my transforms otherwise we don't get them reset and we feel sad um, I could also build electric uh, electric cable and a plug at this point but uh, I'm probably not going to like 41 minutes in wow okay now I was going to use this one but I don't really feel inclined now let's have a look let me check the width against the base still quite a high kind of width that one let's just move a bit there don't want it too high like I said it's going to look silly otherwise and left the seam I just want to bring this put it here down a little bit and I can just squeeze that up into there and it won't intersect as badly. Done. Okay, that works. Okay, now the last bit is where's the actual light going to be? Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate this part here inside it to be the light bulb. All modern and stuff. So, I'll go here and I am going to do a swift loop to about there. And then select all these here polygons and do an extrude by local normal bring it in a bit tick okay and the edges are a little bit sharp now we don't have to worry about polygons I don't think we're anywhere near a large amount at the moment so I'm just gonna loop the chamfer this is one of those lamps where if the bulb wears out, you have probably have to throw it away and the manufacturer just laughs and rubs their hands together in glee. Anyway, let us make some materials for what we're going to be doing. So, M, that's the materials button. You doing okay over there, Darren? So, I'm going to build this one as the metal. I'm going to build this one as the light. And I'm going to build this one as the, uh, what's it called again, the other one, um, what's it called, lamp, uh, shade, that's it, lamp shade, I knew I'd work it out. Okay, so now I've got to apply all these materials, so I'm going to make them different colours, which is going to be red, blue, green, okay, when you're colour blind like I am, red, blue, green, red, blue, and the reason I'm doing this is because I need the colour maps. Now this one. Uh, green. There we go. And these bright colours, even I can see these bright colours. So, give me a second, just quickly check my messages. Kind of hoping that eventually I'll hear from how my son is doing. amend this there we go just had to correct a Facebook post where I put Lord Wellington has a boat and it's Lord Nelson actually I had a feeling it was Lord Nelson but I couldn't be bothered to look it up anyway back to this lamp so first things first with all the everything selected which is two bits I'm going to attach them both together ok 
Okay, done. Next, I'm going to apply this to everything and then select these elements just here and apply the uh, lampshade to them. And then if I go in here and just select these polygons. Um, it depends on the asset, to be honest, um, Darren. Um, and it also depends entirely on the target. I mean, obviously, if you're developing for mobile, that's a world of difference for between developing for mobile and developing for high end. Um, I'm putting more or less fourth. It depends. With static lighting, I'm setting a polygon limit for detailed assets to about 4,000 polygons. Um, I don't really need to worry about character assets because. I don't have any because of the nature of what this is, but uh, oh, blue is light, isn't it? So, for example, this lamp isn't going to be very high polygon. I mean, if I was want to cull things even more, then I'd have just made no shell. You know, if I want more polygons, I'll have a plug, the switch, and stuff like that. Um, my mother had a lamp that looked a bit like this, though, and it was a touch light. So, I'm going to show you. Anyway, polygon counter. There we go, two thousand four hundred ninety-two, which isn't bad our lamp. So control S and let's make ourselves a folder for the lamp. Now always make sure that you have your folders. Okay, This is all the assets I've created over the past couple of days. So folder uh, lamp 01 because I might decide to make two lamps. Okay, So lamp small. Heck, why not? Lamp small. And then, if I've got lamp small, which I'll export shortly, I can also have a lamp bone, which, which I'll also export shortly. And the good thing is that I don't really need to change the map very much, because if this is going to be chrome metal, I'll just do a quick remap on it. Okay, so, let's take this and call it lamp, because bad practice not naming things. I've got to ask, are you in Australia, or are you in New Zealand, Darren? Or perhaps in some Polynesian island somewhere, who knows. I'll just do the unwrap. I'm not going to spend a lot of time unwrapping. I'm just going to cheat. That's what I do. Uh, I do like the unwrap tools compared to what they were like many years ago. I do admit. I mean, look, it's basically unwrapped. <laughs> There's some overlap going on, nearly. Uh, this is pretty much kind of it. But uh, control A, mapping, flatten. I'm going to change the angle to 55 degrees. Click OK. Bam. OK, so that does the majority of the work for us. Now, what I need to do is basically take these parts here that make up the inside. So if I just uh, select them all. So I've got control on, I'm just going to go around. You keep getting Amazon ads. Sorry, man. I think, um, what do you call it? I think that's Twitch's way of like trying to make coin off what I'm doing. If I can upgrade so that I can stop people getting um, additional adverts, then I will. I think I can upgrade, so if I start making some more cash. Ah, uh, right. I know people in Australia and New Zealand. The general kind of consensus tends to be that New Zealand's really pretty, but uh, I would like to see it one these days. Right, so I'm just going all the way up through here until I get to basically the top where that is. Now it shouldn't grow onto the other polygons, so fingers crossed, eh? So, okay, so we've got everything here. So, now what I need to do is do a projection map and fit it like that. And what we'll do is we'll get this. You see, you can see it here. So, oh shit. Let's pull out a minute. It's not t particularly tidy, but it will do as a start. There, you go down there. Okay, now what I'm going to do. 
So it always infuriates me because you get these bits here that have kind of gone over there. I'll repair those later, or never, depending on how I feel. Okay, now I want to fix these bottom parts. So. Grab these. Simple plain arm that will do these fine. So, boink. Turn it off again. Let's move that over there so I can see what I've done. Then over here. Just select this and click grow. Okay, and again, just do a flat map. Now, with this one, it's pretty cunning because what I can do is just move it over here, do some adjusting to it. Because as you almost certainly will know, there's polygons in here. So I'll just go over there. Now I can scale them in, you see. And then grow. And scale this one in as well. There we go. And now we've got the outer edges. Lovely. Okay, now all I need to do really is pack these bits here, just the inside of the lampshades, so they ain't going to cause no problems. God, look at that. That pack thing was terrible. Thanks, pack thing. You did terribly there. I think I'll just manually pack them myself. God. Now, I know the uh, lampshade part's kind of important, so let's just move things around a bit. And I'm going to use my moving stuff around a bit button. You've got to be careful, we do not want any overlapping UVs because Unreal Engine will not be your friend. Okay, this part here, I'm going to throw up into that corner. Yes, I'm aware this is a very lazy way of doing UVs, but I've got a lot of assets to do. And as I'm not beholden to the TD, he's going to be shouting at me. And saying inopportune things about my mother. I'm not really going to lose any sleep about it. If you've got one of those, then it probably means you work in the Electronic Arts Wraith Cave, so bad luck. There we go. I remember when I used to do like live talks, that was always a main thing I used to do, talk about how not to end up working for Electronic Arts. Number one, never apply. Number two, if you get a letter from Electronic Arts telling you you're coming to work for them, you've probably made a first year pact with the devil. There we go. Okay, so check your edges. Don't worry about being perfectly circular as long as, as long as you don't have any touchies. See, no touchies. It's like when you go to strip bars, no touchies. Okay, now this one. By the way, for anyone who's tuned in, I do apologise that I'm not a screaming 19 year old shitting myself while playing games about ghosties. Um, you may have accidentally joined a channel where we do worthwhile things. So, I do apologise. I know a ghost. Okay, so this is about the worst possible unwrap in the world, but I'm feeling lazy. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to, if I have nine, you can see it's all shade and junk. I'm going to apply a. Here we are. Skylight into the scene, and that basically removes all my shadows, which is great. But it just basically it just does how it works. Okay, and now I'm going to press 0 with this selected. And I am going to add a diffuse map. Oh, by the way, when I put this into um, Quixel, which I'm going to do, Quixel is probably going to do horrible things to it. It's unfortunate, but there you go. Okay, I'm going to set this to 2048. Um, not the actual making textures thing, but the actual previewer for some reason doesn't like certain things. It probably won't like this. Anyway, I'm going to make a diffuse map. I'm going to make sure we're using the existing channel. I'm going to render it. 
It's going to say, why aren't you entering it to a target slot? I'm going to say, shut up. There we go. Here come our blocks. Remember, the blue's the emissive, red's metal, green is a lamp. Good thing about the lamp is that, you know, we could set it to be a, what do you call it, a subsurface scattering style material. And then it'll look right pretty in that. Now another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply smooth to my model before I export it. Otherwise it'll be all jaggedy and look a bit like a Rubik's Cube. And that's no good either. This is my last chance as well to check that nothing's sitting on the edge. Nothing seems to be sitting on the edge, so that's good. Alright, we are good. So I'm going to save this. And F stuff lamp, that's where I am. So lamp, color one, color map, target, gone. And now, stop that here. I'm going to apply a smooth. Hit F4 so I can see it. See what I mean about facets? Auto smooth. That's our friend. Now I'm just going to go in and see if the auto smooth settings are working the way I want them to. And uh, yeah, yeah they are, so that's cool. Okay then, Control S, just to save everything. I click Convert to Editable Poly, just to collapse my stack. The stacks do not go across to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Unreal Engine. Now I'm going to Export, Export Selected. <laughs> Is there a need to zero out the smoothing groups? It depends, to be honest. Um, just to show you, I mean, if I'm working on this cylinder, okay, so 16 sides, that's what I've been working with with this, because 16 sides is good, it looks curved at a small radius. Convert to edge of the poly. Um, now, obviously, I'm going to make this into a lamp, or, you know, pretend I'm going to, and you can see immediately the problems. Okay, so facets. You can see all the facets here. Um, now, if I wasn't to do anything about this, then when we get across to Unreal Engine with our exported model, we're going to have all these facets. Now, Unreal Engine may say it doesn't import the smoothing groups or hasn't found any smoothing groups to import, and that's cool. But if we smooth it, it goes across smoothed. Now, this isn't the same sub D, so if I just go down to smooth, okay. Um, until I turn on auto smooth, it won't do anything. And then once auto smooth's on, obviously I can affect it based on the angle threshold. So the more I smooth, as you can see, or the more I increase the threshold, the smoother the object becomes. Now for something like this, I'm not really going to want anything more than about 24.5. Okay, so that way we've got our kind of rounded parts here preserved and so on. But for higher detail objects, obviously I'm going to want to go at maybe 35, maybe even higher. It's just you don't want to lose these edges. Okay, this is important as far as I'm concerned. So just keep an eye on your smooth groups. Anyway, what was I doing? I was exporting. So export selected. Don't export the scene. Only support. Only export what you want to export. And I am going to go to my modern lamp, and I'm going to call this small lamp. one saved done okay and that's all there was to it now another thing I want to do before I stop is I am going to build myself a man I'm making myself a man here we go and I'm gonna make him this doesn't seem right Hang on a second that scale seems definitely off Hang on. Um, what's my UI? Uh, blah 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 blah. Customize. There's my units. Come here. Yeah, I'm using generic units. That's weird. Maybe this lamp's considerably bigger than I thought. Go away. Uh, box. Yeah, I've made this lamp like way big. Wow. Okay, so that's two meters. Fribbons. Um, the lamp I'm gonna want to make. It's probably going to be about half a meter. Double cribbons. 
Okay, so I'm going to need to reduce the size of this rather a lot. So I'm just going to use my scale tool. There we go. I'm going to drop the scale on this by 50. Slightly overscaled, but that's okay. I don't mind. I like it. Now, remember what we said before? Blah blah blah. We said X form. Don't need to because it's just scaled on all three axes. If I hadn't scaled it on all three axes, then we'd have a problem. Okay, Control and S to save that. And now I'm going to export it again. A small lamp. Yes, I do want to replace it, don't I? Yes, 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 yes. Why will it not? Oh, right, I don't give a toss about the materials, that's not really a problem. Uh, now, I want to raise the height of my lamp. Now, before you start scaling up on one single axis, just don't. I now have a tall lamp. Two metres high, thank you very much. Big enough for most rooms. Take that away. And again, just export. Selected. Uh, tall lamp. And what I'll have to do is I'll have to make some wall sconces and some other like hanging ceiling lamps, probably at some point, just so that I can. Um, oh, what do you call it? How long are you going to take writing this FBX file? Good God, Max. Oh, right, I haven't clicked the OK button. Ah. Um, I'm going to create some ceiling lamps and some wall sconces and stuff just to kind of even stuff out. Anyway, bye bye you. Don't save. Don't see the point. Okay, this takes us back to here, where we were. And I'm going to go to Photoshop. I think I'm going to do that. It's probably time to save off clinic. I'll show you one of the maps actually. Some of them are really, really simple maps. So you're going to kind of wonder yourself, what are these for? Don't worry, it all makes sense. Acrophobia 4. Everything's clinical. Right. Is that just a bridge? Yes. Yes, it is. And not all materials appear to be built yet either. Clinical. Anyway, I'm going to close this term and I want to go to my foodie shops. Get that loaded. Still alive over there, people in my channel? Yes, but we wish we were dead. Good, good, good. And I'm going to load up Quixel. I've got the most modern version of Quixel running, which will make things a bit easier. Right, now what I need to do is press the duh button. That loads up DDA. If you've not used Quixel before, time to rush over and buy it. Because this is the most useful tool I have used in 3D in forever. Now some people, they like substance, which is fair enough. But uh, I started using this basically as soon as I saw it come out. I bought it. And uh, yeah, I love it. Anyway, lamp. Small lamp. Material ID, lamp color map. That's all I need to do. Okay, it's UE4, resolution 4096. That doesn't seem right. 2048, that's much better. I was going to say, that seems ridiculous. Okay, and I'm going to click create. Things are going to get slow as shit now. So there'll be a point in just a couple of minutes. Well, it'll ask me if I want to keep my layers or flatten my map. I've never bothered clicking flatten, to be honest, to see what happens, because it takes so long for it to start baking the maps that, uh, well, I just didn't want to. So we'll just see what happens. Hmm. 
wait patiently. Won't be long. We've been at we've been streaming for an hour and five minutes. Doesn't seem like that, does it? Yes. Keep players. What I'll do is I'll throw on the 3D preview, and with any luck, it'll show us a lamp, or it might not. Who knows? The thing is, I've exported this as a three material object so that I can put emissive onto it, which will help. Anyway, uh, 3DO. Click that, and that should be my 3D preview. Now, it might be all ripped apart, triangles galore. This does happen. It won't affect the actual model. It's just the way the previewer is. Oh my god, you little beauty. Uh, there we go. That's our lamp so far. Oh, so proud. What the hell? Oh, right. No idea what was going on there. Scratching my arm. Okay, so now I want some chrome. So. Uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want in Quixel. You can draw on them, you can mask them, you can do what you want. I only use Quixel in the most basic way possible because most of the time it does what I want. I mean, if you're doing character stuff, oh my god, the stuff you can do with characters is amazing. By the way, Quixel doesn't actually pay me any money. So if you know anyone at Quixel who wants to give me money, just tell them I'd love some. Right, so metal, here we are. So this gives us our base metal that we can use on this. For example, if we wanted a military lamp, uh, I'm probably just going to pull across chrome. We've got plenty of chrome. Just ask Bill Gibson. Okay, we've got all these different kinds of chrome, but I don't want to use like really tarnished chrome. Uh, maybe this one, just to show that it's been used. So just slightly patchy in places. Create. There we go. <sighs> Good. I remember when I first started making assets for Unreal Engine, I was so careful about polygon counts. It was just like ludicrous. And now it's like, uh, who cares? I just want it to look good. Right, there we go. So as you can see, everything is now chrome. In a completely unsubtle manner. But, if you look in on the bottom here, you can see that, you know, we've got little dints and dings and stuff. Now, I'm going to bring this back. And we can affect things like the opacity and tiling and all that other good stuff if you want. I'm going to mask my layer to IDs. This is what the colour map was for, by the way. And, there we go, the red bit. Okay, and click done. So now only that part. Now, um, in my smart materials, I'm going to look for something suitable for a lamp. So uh, they tend to use kind of plastics for this. But they use clear plastic. Don't think we've got any transparency. That I can't spell it. Spell it. Yeah. So look, wood, military, PVC. Coming in a world of PVC. Oh come on, stop doing whatever it is you're doing. I want to look at PVC. There we go. Uh, I really need a kind of a thin, almost translucent PVC. I'm going to have a look and see what we've got in the standard materials. Good thing is that if you can't find something, you can always create your own material, so it's not like you're going to run out. Basic materials, plastic. Could also use paper, actually. Coarse grain paper could work really well for that. Let's see, plastic. Yeah, I think the coarse grain paper could be it. Because I can always just up the specular on it a little bit. Oh, good God, I need a delicious breakfast sandwich. Possibly involving bacon. Right, so you can see everything now is coarse grain paper, which is brilliant, that actually worked. So right click and mask layer to IDs. 
Do, 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 do. Give me a second. Some gin then. Gin's good. <sighs> I'll just be a second, I'm just finishing this. Come on in. Oh, yeah. Oh. We're just uh, building a lamp for the game engine. Oh, yeah. Do -ba -do -ba -do. You are. Oh, sweet. Nice ink work, very dark. How many hours was that? Six. Holy shit. Boy. I was really impressed with the mountain because that was spontaneous. Yeah, that's really nice. I had originally three trees to go there, and we were looking at it. Mimi, I've got a wet cat on my lap, bugger off. And it was kind of, it looked like a bit of an overkill with trees, like far too much. Yeah. So we both uh, decided, uh, mountains and, and we tried it, and it looked awesome. That makes sense. Right, I'm just going to throw some glass on that. Do I have any glass materials? Bottle, dirty glass, or headlight? Window. Window. I'm going to use window. Create. Yeah, I've just been making this um, acid and just recording it off. And, um, oh, because I needed some lamps for the project that I'm working on. And it's like, the one that I quite liked the look of was about $49. Or I could make it myself in an hour. So I thought, well, one hour of making it, it is. Okay, I don't want so much dirt on it. That's really dirty. Bring that down a bit. And just gonna map this to here. I saw that you'd gone and done your voting. Yes. Good man. I should drive DJ along with me. Oh wow, good girl. Yeah. Well, took two seconds, walked out the building, I said, see, he told you it only takes two seconds. Oh yeah, it doesn't take long. I'll be uh, getting Thorn and taking him down to the uh, boating booth in a few. And then, when I got home about 10 minutes later, I had a guy at the door with a clipboard and a badge. Asking if you were gonna go and vote. Yeah, Asking I had one of them. If I voted. Who I voted for, I said yes, I have voted, and it's none of your business. Yeah, you don't have to tell them. They're just polling really to try and find out um, who's voting what, so they can get kind of a rough estimate of the numbers. This is a pretty safe voting area, so I don't think there's going to be much of an issue. Right, uh, what I'm going to do now is I am going to export this by pressing this button here, and just set my path. My path is small lamp. Click there and export all materials. Nice to see you space, yeah, she's much happier without her horrible head growth, weirdly enough. Okay, and sorry, I'll won't be a second. Right. Honestly, I've just got to finish what I'm doing. Oh, piglet's lovely. Close all. Save changes to this. Nah. There we go. And then close my quixel. If you don't close Quixel before Photoshop, it just reopens it again, which is maddening. Right. Reopen Clinic so I can test out the asset. Been doing this for 1 hour 13 now. <laughs> what I like to do is every day I like to get a few more assets built for it, and that way I've got like a big library that I can just like throw into it. I did used to have a webcam thing as well that was part of the streaming thing to, to have it then nicked off with it to use it as a microphone. Ah, uh, he's just wondering, have you got his Bloodborne? Or Dark Souls? One no, but Tabitha might. Yeah, he borrowed the Tabitha and she's in Tabitha. It's weird, I don't have, I've only got like um, three PS4 games here, four PS4 games here. Might and I don't think. Is it? Oh, uh, I don't even have an Xbox. Two, he's got both consoles, he had both consoles. Oh, that's right. So I don't know if it is PlayStation 4. He just said, "Zero Bloodborne, Dark Souls, one of the two. Right, I'm going to quickly put a table together in here. Meshes, modern table centre. That will do. Clunk. The smell certainly will. I don't know. How old your kitten now? Wow, yeah, she began big. It is a girl, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Probably for the best. Boys spray everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, let's get this asset imported. 
and uh, to, oh five people look oh bloody hell it's almost like being popular but not quite okay lamp so I'm going to import the two FBX's yeah yeah I do it all the time it, in a way it kind of encourages me to continue working you see and get stuff done and also it means that like um, because I used to teach 3D for so long I can continue doing it because um, the old method of doing tutorials, which was basically, you know, I used to make videos and then either put them on YouTube or allow people to download them in the hope that they'd give me money. just doesn't happen. So um, I've started using Twitch and doing the game dev in Twitch, and at least that way people can kind of see what I'm doing and participate if they so feel inclined. You do like those, um, what you call them, those incentives when you donate so much? Yeah, you can do that on Patreon. I've got a Patreon actually. Get nipple out or rub a beard for five minutes. I like that. Yeah, get nipple out, rub cell, rub a beard lingeringly. Yeah, that's like disturbing and yet strangely awesome. Cuddles cat on lap. <laughs> exactly. Uh, then, uh, yeah, well, you're a peculiar dude. Okay, <laughs> let's see. I'm gonna make the lamp albedo. So create material, and all I'm doing is just taking out the word albedo. Princess, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but if Justin was a burglar, we'd have been burgled by now. Mm. You barking, you're blind. You can't. You're not even in the right room. And the fact that you're talking to me, you're friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's that one. He's that one. Just lonely and like burglars. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> right. So I'm going to pull the roughness across to here. Has that been here for a few times? You think you know my smell? <laughs> She's hopeless. Okay, pull the metallic over. Now, this is a metallic specular workflow, so even if it says roughness, ignore that. Because the roughness is used for how reflective something is, whereas the specular is used for basically the level of specularity. So we are going to pull this straight across to metallic, we're going to pull this straight across to specular, this across to normal, and I am going to pull the lamp in. Really? And as you can see, the lamp has three material. I think it's got three materials. No, it's only got one. Bloody hell. Okay, that's not too bad. Control S. It's a well live stream. Can they hear us? Oh, yeah. So they can hear me as well. Oh, yeah. Because oh, right. I, I wasn't sure if you were talking to me or not. It sounded like you were trying to teach me, and I didn't understand this. No, no, no. We're saying. going good. Right, so, hold on a second. Got the glassy bit, got the papery bit. This isn't shiny enough. So I'm going to put the metallic also into the roughness. But I'll probably put a multiplier in. There we go. And then in the bottom here, I'm going to put. There we go. A material expression constant. Feed them both in and then run that up to the roughness. And let's have a look. So that should be pretty darn shiny. Yeah, it is. Don't want it so shiny. It's ridiculous. I'm going to drop that down to 4.25. That way I'm still getting beats. Too much reflection in the parts that are papery. So. It's funny how that doesn't even look remotely chrome like either, much to my annoyance. Hang on a second, is everything paper there? Sorry about this, Mr. Uh, oh no, they are different materials. Bloody thing. Okay, click save. And I'm going to apply a slight blue tint, I think, to my lamp. Because why the hell not? So, click three. Sorry about this, I'm nearly done. My Do pal Justin. Man. What's that? Great to, be on the to you, dude. Oh, uh, she's lovely. Too much of a blue tint to it, it all looks silly. That'll do. 
It's not a complicated shader. I might go over the material again. Ah, oh, that's better. Yeah, that's much better. I'm a happy camper. Okay, try less. I don't need a collision box on it. And I should be able to just put the lamp on the table. Yep. And the tall lamp on the floor. Which I shall just stick the material on. Okay, now this is just the housekeeping phase, as it's called. Let's go around it. I haven't made an emissive yet for that, but I will. And change this from unlit to lit. There, now we have. He's looking much better. I'm just going to stick a quick, simple light in this. So. There's the place actor button I've completely forgotten the location of. Spotlight, here we are. F. Zoom in. You mean you're going to knock it off, basically? What's that, dude? You've got to knock off in no time. Oh. Uh -huh. He's just edging closer and closer to the door. I can't come to you as well, there's no room. I wonder if they, can, wonder if they can smell a delightful kitten. Well, of course they can smell a delightful kitten, I want to say. Okay, out of current angle. Increase, increase, increase. There we go. In a current angle. Increase, 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 increase. I'm going to get myself a skylight, and then under lights I'm going to get myself a planar reflection, which I'm going to turn off preview plane on. That way we get some nice reflections going on. What's up buddy? I eat tacos over a tortilla, so when the stuff falls out, boom, I'm going to on. <sighs> nice. Okay, so our modern lamps work. What do you think? Nice and Ikea-y. Very Ikea. Yay. Yay, shirt goes overhead. Woo! Job done. All right, my little lovelies in uh, Twitchy land or YouTube land or wherever the fuck you got the video from. <laughs>